Okay, today I take a look at the Vulcan ProTig 205. Got some quick instructions. Well, so we got a stick holder, so we don't have to do TIG with this. We can just do regular stick welding, so that's nice. I do like that they got everything individually boxed. It's like that doesn't really happen as much anymore these days. So you can see in here we got that copper braid. So what that means is whatever this needs to make contact to, if it's not making the best contact on this side of the clamp, it's not going to have to rely on this pin to make contact on the other side. So that braid will carry the current over. Got a standard connector on there. And this is where things get heavy. Okay. So it's actually not as bad as I thought. It's just the entire box together is pretty darn heavy. This is a nice size welder. Like just looking at this thing, you know this thing is gonna have a lot more power than those little welders that you normally find. So we got our gas inlet, we got a reset for the overload, and then we got our power input. So that's actually kind of nice just because if anything happens to that cable, we can easily replace it without having to take the machine apart. Check that out. So nice simple interface on the front. Most of it is the display. We got our adjustment knob, we've got our parameter set, and we got our process set. On the bottom, we got our negative, we got our positive, and then we got our pedal input. Switch on and off. I love that it's on the front, not on the back. Oh, this is kind of cool. So on the top, they actually have a chart. On the side here, it says that if it is 24 gauge, if it is aluminum, use 30 to 50 amps and use 0 0.040 gauge tungsten. So that's actually cool. We got a little chart up here. On this side, it says it is 10 amps up to 205 amps, so a very heavy duty welder. And that is for TIG. For stick, we got 10 amps up to 175 amps. So even still, stick 175 amps, that is quite a bit. Now that's on DC. We also have AC with this machine, which is what I bought it for because I wanted to be able to start welding aluminum. You can weld aluminum with DC, but most aluminum welders are going to be using an AC welder. And it tells you for 120 volts, if you're using a 15 amp plug or a 20 amp plug, you can get up to 115 amps or 130 amps. And then here it tells you the duty cycle. So for 240 volts AC, 25% use of 205 amps for 10 continuous minutes. So that's two and a half minutes running, seven and a half minutes reset. I'm using three 32nd inch tungsten. So that means I can weld between 16 gauge and one eighth gauge aluminum or eighth gauge steel up to five sixteenths steel. Now, theoretically, you can really play around with that, but that is what Vulcan recommends, so I like that they at least put that in there. And here is the big box. So we can use this if you're going to be using carbon dioxide, so if you want to use this regulator with a MIG welder, you can do that. But without that adapter, we have got our argon regulator. So you can see we got pressure as well as flow. This is going to tell us what the pressure is in the tank. It should be around 2000 if it's a brand new bottle. And then as it gets closer to zero, you got to get that refilled. And then whenever you pull the trigger, this will tell you what the flow is coming out. We've got our foot pedal. Got a nice texture on the top, so we don't have to worry about our foot slipping off. I do like that it's covered on all sides. We don't have to worry about anything going underneath it. I have seen some pedals that actually just have a plate on the bottom. So if somebody drops something, it could just roll underneath this pedal. Cool. It is raised a little bit, but it also has a support on the back to make sure that your foot doesn't fall off. Looks like we got quite a long cord on here. And then we got that multi-pin cannon plug on the back. Oh, wow. Hey, that's actually kind of nice. So most of the time when I see these plugs, they've got a, a thick cable like this, and that is already plugged into the back of the machine. Then you got a plug like this, and you can either swap that out for a plug like this, or just use it as is. But this machine actually comes with both full cables. That is really nice. So you just pick if you want to use your 240 or your 120, and stick this into the back of the machine. I like that. We've got our gas tube for the argon. We don't have to put plumber's tape on there because this isn't actually making the seal. The seal is being made by compressing this against the other side of the fitting. All these threads are going to do is they're going to force that down. And for the main part of the show, we've got our torch. You can't see this printed there, SR17. So this is a 17 style torch. What's great about that is that it's going to be compatible with most fittings that you're going to buy. And we can see on the back of the plug, we got that hole going down the middle to let the argon go down to the torch. This is not a flex head. You can always upgrade beyond this. But honestly, this is a very nice torch. I like that plastic knurling on there. It's not sharp, but it is definitely grippy. And it comes with our consumables. It even comes with some tungsten. This is the gray. This is a 330 seconds. So if you want to use something else, just get something else. But I do like that it came with some. Oh, came with a couple. So if you want to take this all the way up to the max, I mean, that's just nice. You got all three different styles. We've got a couple of cups, a five, a six, and an eight. If you don't know, that is one sixteenth of an inch. So a six is a six sixteenths. So that means that this hole is a three eighths diameter. It also means that you can put the stick out three eighths of an inch. We got two back caps. So we got a nice long back cap right there. So if all you want to do is put a point on that tungsten and start going, you can do that with this. But if this thing gets short and you want to put that torch in a tight area, you can use a short piece of tungsten and use this back cap. Very nice that we got that. So here's our collets. We got our one eighth, our one sixteenth, and our three thirty second. You can see the different size holes in there. So that's going to be for the different size tungsten and we got the tips to match so if we want to use our 330 second tungsten we put the 330 second collet on there the 330 second collet body stick that on our torch back cap is going to push that collet forward 
which is going to squeeze down on the tungsten. There we go. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that if there's any dirt or anything in there, we need to blow that out. So the way that we do that, we're just going to crack this open for a second and then close it back off. Just like that. All we're literally going to do is drop that in and thread it. I want to get it fairly tight just because we don't want to have a poor seal, but you don't need to kill it either. Because again, all this is doing is it is forcing that ring onto that valve. And we can thread our line in and we're doing the same thing. And we want to hold the back nut as we tighten this down. And on the back of the machine, we're going to do the same thing. We want to loosen this guy up so it is not going to try to put any gas downstream. But as soon as we crack this open, it is going to try to put all 2000 PSI into this regulator. And if there's any kind of a manufacturing defect with it, then we could have a problem. We want to stay far away from it, as far away as we can get. We're just going to crack it. And if there is any kind of a problem or a leak, we'll close it up real quick. Okay, no problem. So now we can open up the rest of the way. The way these valves work for all inner gas, it's going to seal when it's all the way closed and it's gonna seal when it's all the way open. I know a lot of people, they like to just crack it open a little bit. That's actually a bad idea because that will allow gas to escape out the valve. You wanna either have it all the way closed or all the way open. The only type of gas that you're gonna crack open and leave like that is gonna be acetylene. Everything else is either all the way open or all the way closed. So the thing I'm seeing here that I really like is that there is actually 2,200 PSI on this gauge, which means this is a completely full tank. So now we can start to open up this valve so the black line is liters per minute, and then the red line is cubic feet per hour. So right now I'm at 25, and it'll drop down a little bit when I actually start using the welder. If I'm using like a number eight cup or something like that, you wanna have an output of about 20. When you get to a 16 or something like that, you're gonna be looking at 30 to 45. So the bigger the cup, the more you gotta have this output, the quicker this tank is gonna empty. We can see on the back of the power cord, this ground has a little bend in it, so that is gonna go on the bottom to match with that contact. Oh cool, that does lock too. So if you give it a little twist to the right, that will lock that in. So this is going to be the work clamp instead of the ground clamp. And I can clamp that onto the table. And the torch will plug into the negative. And then we plug in the pedal. So there we go. Now we got a nice point on both sides. So when I destroy one, I can just flip it around and I got a whole nother. So I wanna make sure that this collar holder is tight and I can try to tighten it with my finger and it usually works, but if I wanna make sure, then I want to grab it with some MIG pliers and tighten it. But you can see if I grab it right there, I'm gonna damage the threads. Don't wanna do that. So we can pop this seal off. Then we can grab it right on the knurl and give it a little spin. Very important that the back cap be very loose whenever you're doing that, because otherwise you might just be tightening the call holder to the back cap. Now we'll drop the tungsten in. And it's probably a good idea to clean it at this point. Put that seal back on and put our cup on. I'm going to be using the eight that came with the welder. We need that to be as far out as this cup is wide. This is a number eight cup. That means it's eight sixteenths, so it's a half an inch. So this tungsten can be sticking out a half an inch. So now let's turn on the welder. It's got a nice display on it. All right, cool. So that did kick off. So the process, right now it is on DC TIG. We can do DC stick or AC TIG. I'm gonna keep it on DC TIG. I actually didn't notice this until I was bringing everything else into this room, but this was also in the box. This is a Vulcan metal gauge. So we can take that and try to slide it onto the plate we're gonna be welding to find out what it is. So that is a 0 0.050. And if you look at the top of the machine, we got AC TIG over here, DC TIG over here. 0 0.050 is just a little bit over 1.2 millimeters. So that means we're gonna be looking at between 20 and 50 amps. And they recommend that we use a 0 0.040, so the small size of tungsten. I'm gonna stick with the 330 seconds and just see what I get. I'm gonna lower the amperage down to about 40 amps. So I'm just turn this dial nice and smooth. Okay, so pre-flow, we got 0.3 seconds. So that means it's gonna put out the argon shielding gas for 0.3 seconds before we actually start welding. See, when you tap that pedal down, you're not gonna get an instant arc. It's gonna be 0.3 seconds of gas, then the arc. And post-flow, three seconds, I'm gonna bring that way up. I wanna have somewhere between six and eight seconds. We'll start out with six and see what that gets us. And then we can turn pulse on or off. I'm not gonna be using pulse. You wanna have enough heat to actually melt it, but then you wanna reduce it. So that's what that pulse is gonna do. It's gonna increase the heat, decrease the heat. You can do the same thing by feathering the pedal, or you can just use the pulse. So it's one of the nice things about this machine is it actually has that. So now we're gonna set the pressure. So I'm just going to tap the pedal. So we're still at a little bit over 20. I'm gonna reduce this to 20. 
Yeah, right about there. So right now we're looking at about 20 cubic feet per hour of gas with a number eight cup. Because there's one very important thing we have to do if we're going to be TIG welding, and that is clean the metal. So if you're used to stick welding or MIG welding, and you're used to not really cleaning the metal, and the welds come out fine, in your opinion, they probably are. But if your welds are coming out bad when you're TIG welding, it's probably because the metal isn't clean. Super common thing to mistake. So invest in flap discs. So before I start using filler rod, I'm just going to run a line and I'm going to see how the machine is running. Did save the settings, so that's good. We're still at 40 amps, so we got six seconds of post flip. I think the 40 amps is going to be a little bit low, so I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to go straight to 50. Oh, the 40 amps is actually just right. Okay, yeah, my bad. That's one of the nice things about a TIG welder is you can weld really thin stuff without blowing a hole through it. And that is where I welded. And that is where I welded to the table. So it might be a little tricky to weld this thin stuff. I'm going to do a max of 50 amps. So that just means that when I push the pedal all the way to the ground, I'm getting 50 amps. So I can still vary that if I want to. And with filler rod, just like everything else, like, no, that's aluminum. I don't want that. But that is a cool thing about the, uh, the TIG welding, is that you don't need to change the gas. You can do everything with one bottle. You just change the filler rod. You got steel around here somewhere. All right, here we are. This is some ER7OS6, and this is 1 16th. And as with everything when you're TIG welding, you want to make sure it is clean. So I'm going to clean this off with isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to make sure that this dries up, because we don't want to catch fire. And then we can start using that. OK, let's cause some trouble with this. Definitely too much heat, and I'm going to set this back down to 40. Okay, so we're starting to get somewhere. I'm pretty darn inconsistent right now, but that is a me problem, not a welder problem. Just so you can see what I got right now. So hopefully as I move on from this, I will improve. <laughs> So here's my second pass. You can see it's pretty darn crooked, but the penetration is definitely there, so that would hold. So if only I could go straight. I'm going to give myself a little cheat. I'm going to draw some lines across it so I got something to follow. So I'll put a little cut line in that. I'm going to try to follow that, and we'll see what we get. So we're starting to get there. The line did help, although it was a little bit hard to see. I think that weld actually looks pretty good. I definitely started out nasty. Oh, it looks like I missed a little bit right there. So I burned through at the beginning, didn't get enough penetration right in the middle, so I still got a ways to go, but I'm getting there. So I'm starting to build that up a little bit. I'm getting a little bit more inconsistent, but that's just because I'm trying to feed a little bit more wire, and that's kind of messing up my game. But it's getting a lot more penetration. You can also see it is definitely warping the metal, so I'm definitely going way too hot, but we are getting something. I think one of the things I'm going to try now is I'm just going to try a thicker feed wire, just so I don't have to move my feeding hand quite as much. So I got some ER7 OS2, but this is 330 seconds, so it's a little bit thicker. So that very much changed it up. You can see I also got some porosity in there, so that's not good. I started going way too slow there. You can see the heat affected zone. It was way out there. Very high penetration. So I got to speed up a little bit. I think I was doing better with that thinner wire, and we'll see what we get from there. So I did speed it up. It's pretty inconsistent, and did some weird stuff there on the bottom. So I'm going to give myself another cheat code, and I'm going to go with some thicker metal, because this is warping like crazy now. Okay, so this is a thicker plate, but this is also stainless steel. So I'm going to be using ER306L. All right, so that that is 0.125, so that's eighth inch steel. And they recommend 70 to 130 amps. I'm gonna go with 90. This is super great. I'm increasing the post flow gas, and I think I'm gonna turn up the bottle a little bit too. So I'm at 20, I'm gonna take that up to about 25. So we are still gray, but uh, we are also blowing right through the bottom. You can see all that sugary. So the reason that that is looking like that, that sandy texture, is just because I'm not back purging. But the gray is not enough gas. And the reason it's sinking so much is just because this plate is getting hot. So I either have to let this cool down before I keep going or just move to another part of the plate. So I'm going to do that. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move to a secret weapon, which is the BBW cup. So this is a number 16 cup, uses a ton more gas, has a lot more coverage, and kind of makes your welds look good no matter what you're doing. So you're going to have quite a bit of stick out with that and I'm gonna see how this goes. Now, still gray but it is looking a heck of a lot better. It's amazing how much of a difference one little cup can make. So I put the welder away for the day but then I came back and this is what I'm getting right now. So what I'm doing is I'm just welding on one side and then spinning it around doing the other side just so I can keep it kind of relatively cool. But I'm varying between 70 and 80 amps on this eighth inch plate 
And so you can kind of see the 70s over there, 80s over there, a little bit more penetration. But I think I'm starting to get there. And then on the .050, I was experimenting with some thinner beads and doing the same thing, just kind of going back and forth on the plate, trying to keep it cool. This is 35 amps. And you can see I still got plenty of ways to go, especially with this thinner material. But it's starting to look a little bit better anyway. So I'm going to put something together. So that worked. That welder can weld. That is pretty cool. So what I found working with this thing is mostly that it's just very consistent. So I mean, as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, this thing is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I had a very good time with that. So what would be a review of this without trying some AC TIG? Fair warning, I have never welded AC TIG on aluminum in my entire life. The entire reason I wanted this welder is so I could learn how to AC TIG just because I want to be able to weld aluminum. So take this with a grain of salt. Now this says, so this plate I got right here, I already cleaned it and it is 0.0937 so so i'm gonna go with about let's try 80 amps with the 332nd okay so pre-flow uh, this is really only to protect the tungsten for aluminum hertz eh, actually we'll just stick with 80 hertz and percent 65 seems a bit extreme let's go with 75 and then post flow we just need enough to protect the tungsten. So let's go with four seconds. And I got this flow at 20. It's probably still high. And I got some ER4043. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful thing. Perfect. Literally my first try welding aluminum. That's insane. Cool. So the things I got to work on right now is getting rid of that bug hole. So I got to work on pulling that pedal up a little slower, pulling it back, and uh, putting an extra dab in there. But yeah, I am incredibly impressed with this. Like this is the most natural thing in the world. So I'm hoping this is really hot. All right. So yeah, that thing, that thing can weld. That's incredible.